Yes, I'm coming to you from the bathroom because this is the number one feature about this hotel. Every room offers an incredible bathtub like this that's so comfortable. Shower, both with incredible views, whether it's facing this way or the other way. This is one of the most expensive hotels in the whole city here in Bell Harbor, Miami, Greater Miami area. I'm so excited to show it to you. This is my 21st Ritz Carlton. Let's go check it out. And here we are in tower two out of four on the 11th floor. There are only two options when I get off the elevator. We have this room here, which is a suite. And then we have our room here, which is gonna be the standard room with the two beds on a high floor. So every single floor of this Ritz Carlton only has two doors, which makes it extremely private. They said a lot of celebrities come here because of that. Now heading in, we do have our own little lighting fixture. The property has not been renovated in a long time, but they said every three months they go through every room and repaint, touch up and keep it looking amazing. So we have this little walkway when we come in here with the Nespresso machine that all Ritz Carlton's have. Down below here, we do have a fridge with uh, the drinks for purchase. And then just the Nespresso pods up here with a little mini sink, really cool headboard, light up here design. Now here we are heading into the room. We have the two queen beds. And I have to say your eye goes right over here to this wall with these really cool gold plated things sticking out. I think it's uh, like sea, seashells or the sand dollars or something like that, but it's very premium, very nice. The queen beds are very plush looking. I do like this huge headboard, very nice. But again, it is just kind of like a flat wall. I feel like they definitely could have incorporated something a little bit more into that, uh, but I do love this light here. We have a very big nightstand between the beds over here, which is storage areas, complimentary waters. All waters at Ritz Carlton's are complimentary. We have the work desk over here. It doesn't have a view of the ocean, but the TV is also here with the mini bar items for purchase as well. I do like this lamp, but the chair definitely could be a little bit more modernized. Now they did have a little welcome amenity for us with a nice, nice note. Like I mentioned, this is my 21st Ritz Carlton. So it's a big milestone here. And that's a nice little touch when they do that. I will say as well, we have another chair over here and then we have this nice balcony it's a much smaller balcony than the Ritz Carlton Fort Lauderdale room that we had but regardless it's a nice beautiful view I'd say probably maybe the best best view I've had one of the best views in Florida that I've had we have the whole coastline view of the ocean we have the skyline we have the road we have the boats the other building as well as the Hallover Inlet right here which is a famous waterway very gorgeous now they do have the two chairs out here on the balcony Definitely could be more premium, especially for the price point of this hotel. They could have cushions on these, maybe a really cool like lighting fixture kind of over here or like a plant, but definitely very kind of basic, basic balcony, which is some very, it seems like cheaper chairs here. That definitely could be a little bit improved. Now heading back in, you can kind of see a view of the back side of the room. Again, we just have a painting on the wall flat walls, they definitely, I feel like could have added like maybe part bookshelf or like something just a little bit more unique. All right, here we have the closet, big closet. We have the two luggage racks, the safe, the ironing board. We have one robe in here and I believe one in the bathroom. Also unique robe. All these hotels that I've been to don't have the brand standard robes, which is the Frite robes. They all have these different robes. Some say Ritz Carlton, some don't. Some say the Ritz Carlton and the location. This one just says Ritz Carlton, but it is very thin. I don't necessarily approve. It is a robe, but it's not plush like the Ritz Carlton, like in Nomad Manhattan, the one in Singapore, a lot of them are just so much more plush and thick. This is just so thin and a little bit firm. I also do not see any slippers in here, so I will be looking for those, but I hope they're not by request like the Ritz Carlton Fort Lauderdale was. They should actually be in the room per bread standards as well. The other big note is with luxury properties, you need to have automatic curtains, at least in my opinion, they do not here. It is manual. So that is just one thing that they definitely could improve upon. Now here we are going into the bathroom. We do have the actual closing doors here for privacy. Now this is one of the cool bathtub views you'll have. 
we have this really cool elongated tub here looking out at the beautiful coastline. So this truly is one of the most tropical views you can get. This is absolutely spectacular. We have a rainfall shower over here with the glass looking out. This already is a lot better shower than the Ritz-Carlton Fort Lauderdale by tenfold. It is just really cool glass, big rainfall shower, and it's spacious. You're not like jam packed in the little tiny shower in, inside with no view, you got a view. Huge shower, rainfall, plenty of space to move around and a great view of both outside and in the bathroom area. So it reminds me a little bit of some of the luxury properties I've had like the Ritz-Carlton Fukuoka where the shower was literally at the end as well as the Ritz-Carlton Mexico City. Also had like a tub and shower view, kind of similar, just of different landscaping, but this is probably the most tropical one that I've ever had. Now, I like that rainfall shower. You also have the handheld, you have the Diptyque soaps, but just a really clean area. Now this is not privacy glass, so they do recommend lowering the shades when you are taking a bath or shower. This also is one of the first hotels, uh, which is good, that has two sinks for just the standard room. So that's good. And I, this is actually nice. This is a really cool spigot. The Ritz-Carlton Fort Lauderdale definitely can improve their spigots here. This is actually beautiful. And this round sink, it's so sophisticated. We got the live plant, which also is a brand standard that's required in bathrooms at Ritz-Carlton property. So that's great they have that. We have the lotion, just some other little amenities here. Now we do have this bench, but right away I can already see, this is already coming apart here. This should not be in the room. This should have been replaced immediately, especially for Ritz Carlton, which is known as the epitome of luxury. You should never have something like that left in a guest room. Now over here, we do have the second robe as well as that same closet. You can access it from this side or that side, which is cool. So when you're in the bathroom, you can access your clothes or if you're in the room, you can also access those. All right, so here's the other robe and the slippers are actually inside. So that is a big relief. Every Ritz Carlton needs to have two robes and two slippers in the room waiting for you. It should not be by request. Now the slippers, I do approve. They're, 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 pretty, they're pretty thick, pretty soft. They're not like the best softest. They're also still not brand standard. They're not the frite ones, which they're supposed to be, but they're still pretty nice. And I'm glad they're in the room ready for you. And then we have the sliding door here heading into the toilet room. We have a toilet and it looks like the other bidet thing. I've only seen those like in Dubai. So that's really interesting that we have that here. I'm not sure why we would have that here, but this is a very big space for a, for a toilet area. But overall, it is a spacious room for Bell Harbor. Bell Harbor is one of the most expensive zip codes in the US. So it's very expensive here. These rooms are extremely expensive. I think minimum at least $1,000 a night on average. So this is a great hotel, beautiful views. Definitely not the most insane room I've ever seen, especially for Ritz Carlton, but it is very clean. It is very spacious and at least has amazing views. Let's go check out the rest of the property. Welcome to the Ritz Carlton Bell Harbor, a serene beachfront retreat located in one of Miami's most exclusive neighborhoods, Bell Harbor Village. Now, this is the rival area. I have stayed in Bell Harbor before, previously at the St. Regis, before I did the YouTube reviews. Now I wanted to check out the Ritz Carlton because it always seemed more expensive and more exclusive. So I wanted to see what the hype was all about. Now, this is the arrival area with your vehicle. It did not feel luxurious at all. It just seemed very standard. Service at the arrival was great. And then here we are stepping into the lobby. Now, when I first walked into the lobby for the first time, I was actually kind of shocked. For me, it just felt extremely dated. It's not my vibe at all. I like new, modern, or if it's older, just more modernized. I just, the wood felt a little bit dated. The pictures, it just felt like I was stepping back in time. Now, if you like classic hotels in that kind of style, good for you, you would love it. Now, this is the defining moment. They do this every day in the afternoon for like an hour or so. Never had anything like it. They take ice cream and they put an espresso over it. It was fantastic. One of my new favorite desserts. Now, the lobby area, it keeps going down where you can get to their main restaurant or you can kind of go back here around the corner of the other way, which is where you access the guest rooms, which is right down here. Now, this property is extremely exclusive. They only have 102 rooms total. And on every single floor, there's four towers total, but on every floor of the four towers, you only have two rooms. So a lot of very like high-end people, uh, even millionaires, celebrities a lot of times i heard stay here just because of how private and exclusive it is now we were escorted to the room now at check-in it was 
for me a bit of an issue because they said that there were no upgrades available, but there were at least six to eight I could book right then on my app. So in my opinion, this hotel does not have good loyalty even for Ambassador Elite members. They gave us just a standard room. The only good feature I liked was the bathtub. Everything else about the room felt dated kind of like the lobby did and that's my honest opinion i would not choose to stay here again also parts of it were just kind of falling apart the tub handle literally would come right off the just wasn't it just didn't seem that special that bench you know in the bathroom was also just kind of tethered and kind of tearing apart they did have like a tv built into the mirror so there were some features that were nice but overall i was not that impressed with the rooms at all i didn't feel that comfortable cozy or inspired here at the Ritz, you have two dining options. You have the Artesian Beach House, which we're going to now, or the Water's Edge, which is by the pool. Now, the Artesian Beach House here is their signature restaurant, and they are open all day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, the resort fee here is pretty expensive at $45 plus tax, but it does include two complimentary cocktails here, which were exceptional. It also includes a two-hour bike ride, which we took advantage of, two beach chairs and an umbrella, and two items that you can have pressed. The Artesian Beach House offers a locally focused menu that emphasizes fresh seafood and healthy plates. They have a beautiful outside seating area here or you can choose to sit inside. Also just to note this property is, does not have a club lounge at all unlike many other Ritz Carltons. Now from the guest rooms you can take the elevator down here where you can kind of wind around past the spa area and then walk all the way out to the pool. Now the pool area I will be honest it was not that impressive. They did have some of these more private areas for like the hot tubs but I think those cost extra. I'm not completely sure but the pool area was decent but my problem was with the service we weren't really ever checked in on the people there did not seem that friendly i'm not sure if they're having staffing issues but it just definitely did not up to what the ritz carlton level of service should be now the one positive was they did have a show outside by the pool the first day our room was not ready so they said we could wait around and they would give us a call when it was so we went outside and they happened to be having one of their activities so they had someone come in from an outside zoo or animal shelter and we got the coolest show got to see all these amazing animals so honestly this was the highlight of our whole stay along with the bathtub view otherwise i don't really have an interest to return to this property Here's the menu out by the pool, and they also have what's called Water's Edge. You can kind of see those tables set up. It's their other restaurant, but it doesn't have that great reviews, and I don't think it's that popular. Now, right directly before you go outside to the pool, you also have the door here, which will access the fitness center. For a property at this price point and so expensive, I feel like it could have been so much better. There was really no view at all. They like had the windows kind of faded out. The ceilings were a little bit low like literally no view while you're on the treadmill which I thought was very sad sure they have a little amenities but hardly nothing they could have also had some like fresh fruit out or things like that just very sad now heading back towards the front desk area in the elevators is the spa now the spa is a third party meaning everything in there is an extra charge there is no complimentary amenities including the sauna or steam room for guests so everything here is an extra charge it's $35 per person and otherwise it's $75 if you're not a guest just to access the amenities like steam room and sauna that doesn't even include any treatments. It also just really didn't feel that amazing with the color of the wood and just kind of lower ceilings. Now we did take advantage of part of the resort fee was the bikes. The bikes are located by the pool. They'll let you take two of them out per day for I think a couple hours and that was fun because Bell Harbor has a beautiful bike path and kind of walking path right along by the water. All right, now for the review, I'm gonna go right into it. I'm gonna start with the room. The room, I'm gonna get a 4.5 out of five, mostly because it is very old. It seems a little dated. Now they do a great job upkeeping it, keeping fresh paint. It does feel fairly clean, but the older wood, the style, it was just really dated, kind of like the, kind of dated in a sense like the Ritz Carlton Tokyo. It just hasn't been renovated in a long time. It feels a little bit like uh, the, a lot of flat walls, the headboards, it just didn't do it for me. Definitely could improve the rooms. Next up is Inspiration. All right, for Inspiration, I'm gonna give this property a 3.5 out of five. The inside just feels very old money. Now, if you're maybe on the older side or you kind of like more classic luxury, you might really like this place. But for me, it just was a little bit darker, just the darker wood tones. 
it seemed maybe almost too expensive in a way, but it was just older and not renovated. Also the pool area definitely just not as nice as a lot of the other ones I've recently been to. Just a lot of things that could be improved. Now the reasons it is still getting a 3.5 is mostly just because of this view, the bathtub view. And they also had some really fun activities like with the animals that they showed us at the pool. I'm not sure how often they do that. As well as they do have that evening ice cream coffee thing that they do every evening in the lobby. So those factors led to the inspiration, but everything else really didn't. Next up is gonna be the service. Service, I'm gonna give a four out of five. Front desk staff is, is very nice. The biggest drawback was definitely the pool staff just not very accommodating, don't go out of their way to help you that much that we notice compared to the other properties. Uh, I don't think they brought around like any cool like little treats or amenities, just very, very sad. Said hello to someone, didn't say hi back. It just did not feel like the level of service Ritz Carlton should have, which was also disappointing. Also, the staff, while a lot of them are nice, it just overall, it just didn't feel like as welcoming as family-like as a lot of other properties I go to where I can hardly leave because you grow so close to those staff members. Also, just quick notes about service. The housekeeping team has been great as well as the valet staff has been great as well. The other thing at this hotel to note is I don't think the elite appreciation is that high when it comes to like Titanium and Ambassador upgrades. I could book about six suites on my app and they let me know that there was none available upon checking in. So I'm not sure if they do the upgrades to suites here, especially for the price point. So I think that they definitely could improve their lead appreciation when it comes to upgrades and amenities and things like that, especially at this high price point. And one delivery to the room did take about two calls in 30 minutes to finally get it. So also just definitely little areas of improvement, especially when it's such a small hotel, only 102 rooms. Finally, for value, would I return? That I'm gonna go ahead and give a 3.5 out of five. I will not be coming back here unless they completely renovate the place. If they renovate this place like they did the Ritz-Carlton Naples with that same type design, this would probably get a perfect score. The location, it's just the inside for me, the lobby, the rooms, even the spa is just so, needs a renovation. It, it needs to be new and modernized like a lot of the new properties that are being opened around the world. Now this property is very expensive when it comes to the pricing. I think at least $1,000 a night. Now this room can go up to $2,000 a night. So it's very, very expensive. So I do recommend using your Marriott Bonvoy points to stay here if you have those. But overall, I did stay at the St. Regis before and we actually enjoyed that property better. It's another Marriott property of about equal points redemptions. So I definitely recommend if you're deciding between this one and the St. Regis, we did actually prefer the St. Regis. And if you're an elite member, you actually get the complimentary breakfast and they do have the butler service as well, which this property does not offer.